Hello! Now I'm going to show you how you can load your operating system onto a USB and boot it on your PC. So you're going to want to have two file explorers open, one of them is your workspace directory and one of them is the USB directory. Inside of the USB directory you need to create two folders, the first one is EFI and then inside that folder you have boot. Now you go into the GNU EFI directory of your workspace Go into x86 underscore 64 and then into bootloader and copy main.efi. Copy that into the boot directory on your USB and rename it as boot x64.efi. Now go back to the root directory on your USB and then go into your kernel directory, go into the bin folder and copy kernel.elf and zaplite16 or whichever font file you are using onto the USB. The file paths on the USB are relative to how we have programmed it in the bootloader. We can program it inside the bootloader to have kernel.elf and zaplite16.psf at different paths, but this is just how we have done it in the tutorial series. Alright, now that they've been copied onto there, we can exit Windows or whichever operating system you are using. On Windows, if you hold shift and then shut down, it will shut down completely, allowing us to go into the boot menu on startup. Now, as you can see, with my USB plugged into my computer, I will turn it on and then I will spam F11 to go into the boot menu. On your computer, it might be a different button to go into the boot menu, but once you're in the boot menu, you need to select the partition that is the UEFI partition of your USB. Just press enter and then your operating system will load on your computer. Now, this is the operating system that I've been working on in my own time. As you can see, I've got my mouse cursor in the middle of the screen and I've got some information at the top left about the RSDP. Now if I move my mouse, nothing will happen because my computer doesn't have PS2 emulation, so that is sort of why I'm going on to making USB support next. Just keep in mind that real hardware is completely different to the emulation software that we use, so if you get some errors that happen on real hardware but not in the emulator, then you're going to have to debug that separately. So what works fine for one PC might not work fine for the other. Alright, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.